So you're playing Genshin, you do a 10 pull, and you get five star Mulani. Oh, and five star Emily. And you win a 50 50 and you get five star Dia. Now, in this video, we're going to look at these three characters working together in a team because Mulani kind of allows us to do something that no other Hydro character beforehand has allowed us to do. And that is going to be Forward Vaporize. At least, those characters, the other characters, haven't allowed us to do it consistently and reliably like Milani has. And we're going to talk about why that's the case uh, once we get a little bit further into the video. But first, we're going to talk about these three characters specifically. I have been running this team. The fourth slot is a little bit flexible, um, so I really want to focus on these three characters. Now, you can do this team without Dia or without Emily. I found that these are just the best slash my favorites slash the ones that I like to do it with. So we will talk about replacements for Emily and Dia as well uh, towards the end of the video. So I do wanna show this team in action uh, before we kind of talk about some of the other characters and things like that. Um, this team is going to cause burning onto an Emily. This team is going to cause burning onto an Emily. This team is going to cause burning on an enemy with Emily and Dia. So that way Milani can come onto the field and vaporize off of these enemies multiple times without the enemies losing that pyro aura that we want or need on the enemies that way Milani can vaporize again. Now the reason that I personally like using Emily and Dia in these teams is because Emily wants the enemy burning, right? The more, uh, the longer that an enemy burns, the more damage that she can do. Her entire kit kind of revolves around having enemies around that are burning. Dia is also a very good option here because she can work with Emily to have off-field pyro so that way anytime an enemy takes damage within uh, Dia's uh, fiery sanctum, you know every so often, not every single time, then it's going to reapply the pyro to the enemies causing more to burn, all this other kind of stuff, and it can even if we do not hit an enemy with the fiery sanctum at first, then whenever Emily's uh, perfume bottle, Dendra perfume bottle hits an enemy, it will cause the burning because of the coordinated attack with Dia's skill. Also, also, it is going to mitigate some of the damage caused by burning, right? So that way we don't have to necessarily worry about running a... We, it, it gives us the option of running a healer or a shielder. I prefer running it with a healer. But because Dia self-heals, she's going to be taking some of the damage as well. That's going to give uh, interruption resistance to all of the characters in the field. It's such a... It's a really, really good kind of flow to the team and dynamic where all of the... where they're kind of working together. Also, my Dia is very, very well built, and uh, if I have Mulani's skill uh, in cooldown, um, or I don't have her burst ready or anything like that, then Dia can come on the field, use her punches, and I'm not losing too much damage, right? She's still doing uh, a fair good amount through her punches. So this is just a really, really good team because we can make the enemies have burning on them. So that way whenever Mulani takes the field, she can do her Mulani stuff and she can just vaporize on the enemies, dealing our very, very big damage. As you can see, 225k on the vape. That is with a not so good built Mulani too. And you'll be able to see that we can make that number go higher whenever we swap Mulani's build and swap some people around as well. This has become, this this team is the reason I pulled Mulani. It was because I had Emily, I had Dia, I really liked using them together in a burning team, where it was like a mono uh, pyro team with Emily in there getting burning. Um, but then I was like, okay, I kind of, if Mulani will slot into this well, then I can use her too. So that's the whole reason why I got Mulani was so that way I could use her in this team for vapes. So it's really, really good. I really, really enjoy using this team a lot. So real quick, this is kind of going to be like Mulani and Emily's also like Artifact Grinding Hell Guide video. So we're going to kind of go through um, their stats and their builds as well and kind of kind of mix them together. So Emily, right? 22,700 HP, 2,000 attack, 21 EM, split 73 over 199 with 153 ER, that's high. Weapon R2 level 90 deathmatch for the crit rate as well as the attack buff that we're gonna get from this passive. For artifact, she is running a four piece unfinished reverie, which is very, very good because this artifact set boosts damage if there are burning enemies nearby. For the sands, attack, goblet, dendro, and then for the circlet, crit damage. Pause if you want to see the individual artifacts. Also pause on that sands and look how much ER I rolled there because that was just ridiculous. 
This set's really, really good because it wants burning enemies around, which we can do and keep the enemies burning even with Mulani causing vaporize reactions. So this is gonna be really, really good set for Emily. It's going to allow her to do a fair good amount of off-field uh, dendro damage. Now for Dia. My Dia is one of my better built characters, and I have been working on my Dia since I first pulled her like a year ago. She is level 90, 50,000 HP, almost 1400 attack, 42 EM, crit split 73 over 170 with 111 ER. She does have a Pyro Goblet. For weapons, she is running uh, Beacon of the Reed Sea, which is her signature, which gets up crit rate, attack, and HP, so it's a very, very good weapon. She is running four piece VG, which works phenomenal for in a burning team. Because of how the burning works, because it does deal a little bit of self damage, when we bring up Dia's skill initially and then mitigate some of the damage that we're taking to Dia, I have a permanent uptime with this artifact set through this burning team. So I don't have to wait for stacks, I don't have to wait for somebody to take damage. As soon as I start burning, Dia has full stacks and she can contribute a good amount of damage, as well as keeping the enemy inflicted with a pyro through the burning reaction for Mulani. So I really, really like having this artifact set on Dia in this specific, this team. She is also C5, which is going to be uh, very, very good. I need that C6. I'm one away. I'm so close to having C6 Dia. Talents, of course, double crowned with her normal attack at level eight. I am going to triple crown her at some point. Now, Let's go look at the VG pieces. Of course, HP Sands, Pyro Goblet, Crit Raider, Crit Damage Circlet. I really need to replace that Crit Damage Circlet because then my idea could be even better if I replaced it. With those two out of the way, with talking about how those two work together with burning and they're both getting an advantage using the burning. Emily buffing her own damage with burning, Dia having perma VG stacks with burning. Let's go look at Mulani. Now, the reason why Mulani is so good in this team is she is not like the other Hydro characters that Genshin has given us. They apply a ton of Hydro. Mulani doesn't. So whenever, if we were to try this with any other Hydro character, they would override the burning and either cause a bloom if they overrode the pyro or if they overrode it, if they overrode the burning, then we would either create a bloom or we would just vaporize and have nothing left because they have so much pyro in elemental gauge theory and units and gauges, they apply so much hydro that it would just override it. They would get one vape off and then we would have to reapply everything for them to get another vape off. So it's not great for forward vaporize, right? To get that times two damage bonus that forward vape gives. Most of the time, if you're gonna run a vape traditionally with like Hu Tao, it's gonna be a reverse vape where Hu Tao is causing the vaporize pyro onto hydro, and then it's gonna get a times 1.5 damage bonus, whereas hydro onto pyro gets a base of times two. So inherently, it is stronger, immediately stronger. We've just not been able to do it efficiently or reliably until Mulani. Now that we have Mulani here, we can do reliable forward vaporizes because of burning, right? She does not apply a ton of hydro to our enemies. She So she will not override the burning aura. She will not override the pyro aura to cause a bloom because she does not apply as many units or gauges. So kind of think about it like if you have an enemy that's burning and they have hydro on them, there's a certain amount of fire on them. If you put too much water on them, it puts it out. If you put a little bit, there's still fire left, right? So we wanna do that. We wanna put a little bit so that way there's still fire left so that we can vaporize again. Now let's look at this Mulani. 31,000 HP, 110 EM, level uh, 80. 82 over 164.5. We do change her build up a little bit kind of as we go into it. For a weapon, level 50 out of 60, Sacrificial Jade to get crit rate and to get some HP, two-piece Nymph. The Mulani that has been hitting 230K in this video is only on two-piece Nymph and an unleveled Sacrificial Jade. Mulani is crazy. She's so, so good. She is C1, so that is affecting it a little bit. You can still see that she's not doing a ton of, she's, she's doing a ton of damage even without like crown talents, right? Now, real quick, I do want to show uh, Obsidian Codex, which is kind of the new artifact set that's going to work well with her. Also, look at this plume. I love this plume. It's one of my best. So the two piece is going to increase the damage uh, if they're in their Night Soul Blessing feel form. The four piece is going to increase crit rate once they've used Night Soul points. So typically, you would run four piece with this and then a crit catalyst. The only crit catalyst that I have is Widzith, and it's unreliable to me. 
That's why I've been running Sacrificial Jade, and I'm just trying to get as much crit damage in the substats. However, I do swap her over to Woodzith later in the video. But if I stick with Sacrificial Jade, I'm probably gonna go like two piece Obsidian Codex, two piece Nymph, two piece VG, something to get up HP or Hydro damage. And then of course get the damage that we get from uh, the Night Soul Blessing from the two piece. I might do that. Or if I get the four piece, I'll use Woodseth, right? So I'm still not sure what I'm gonna quite do. I don't even have a two piece set, so I'm not quite worried about it yet. Now, HP Sands, Hydro Goblet, and then Crit Damage Circlet because you're gonna be able to get your crit rate from weapons or from uh, her, she ascends with it, or from the artifact set. So if I were to ascend her to level 90, she's almost gonna be at 89 crit rate, 87.3 crit rate. So swapping her over to something like Widzith, Ascending her takes her to like 60 something crit rate. There's a lot of, and then if we were to use the four piece codex, then we would have over 110%, like 100%. So it's kind of, um, an interesting thing. I'm seeing what artifacts I get with Codex before I make up my mind whether or not I'm using Sack Jade or uh, Woodsit. So now that we've kind of talked about these three characters, we're gonna talk about the fourth slot, the flex slot, as it were. I have tried a couple different characters in this and it's really gonna depend kind of how you want the team to meld together, right? Earlier in the video, we were using Kazuha. Kazuha is gonna be a really, really good VV Shredder as well as giving a damage bonus over to Mulani so she can do more with Vape. Another option. That is a very interesting option. It's actually going to be Nahida with Prototype Amber. Because we still want a little bit of healing, right? We have no healer or no shielder in this team. If we put Prototype Amber onto Nahida, it will give some healing. Also, the EM share over to Mulani is gonna be crazy good for getting the vaporizers, right? She already had 110 EM. This is gonna take her up way higher, allowing us to just get an insanely high amount of EM for vaporize. So that way we can take that multiplier very, very high. Now, typically you only want about 200 EM because at that point you start getting a diminishing return where if you go higher in your EM, you're gonna be lacking in other stats. However, if you get the EM higher through passives like Nahida, then it's a no-lose situation. Also, it's gonna be still relatively easy to have uh, burning on enemies. Now, in this case, I might take Emily out and put somebody else in there um, versus Mulani, maybe somebody to maybe uh, at that point doing um, like Jean or Kazuo or something like that if you were gonna use Nahida in this. But for right now, I'm just throwing Nahida into that last slot. And as you can see, just doing that, Mulani's hit like 333K in here, right? With like my crap Mulani build, 333K. So this is gonna be a really, really decent option. Uh, I'm not gonna use this personally because I like Nikita staying with Milu for Bountiful Core. So I'm probably not gonna try this unless I was just doing it in a showcase, right? Now, another, another one is going to be Farina. Specifically, you would probably run Healer Farina because we don't want her minions to be stealing the vapes from Mulani. If we have too much Hydro, right, like we talked about earlier, if Farina applies too much Hydro, that she would cause a vaporize reaction and get rid of the burning on the enemies. And we don't want that because Mulani is going to out damage uh, Farina. So most likely we would just stick with her in healer mode um, using her burst to buff, kind of swapping through our party members to get some healing and get that fanfare point stack up. Next, we're gonna talk about Jean, which this is a team that I really, really enjoy doing. Uh, Jean's gonna get VV Shred. She's going to get um, the healing, the team-wide healing, right? So this is gonna be really, really good. Uh, on this team specifically, it was a very fun team because I could use Dia's burst as damaging, like as my on-field damage dealer, while I was waiting on Milani's skill to cool down or something, or get more energy to her for her burst, using Jean to kind of swirl Hydro and then Pyro and allowing just whoever I needed to, to be doing damage. This is a much more of a team where I can go to Dia or Mulani and use either of them as an on-field damage dealer. Now, another option is going to be Benny. This is not gonna help Mulani out at all. This is just going to be for Dia and Emily with Mulani taking more of a secondary role in the team as a DPS. So this would be, this would, this would very much be closer to a 
main DPS Dia versus Mulani, bringing Mulani on, getting the vapes, taking her back off, letting Dia use her burst, letting Emily use her burst, and then just whenever you have, uh, while you're waiting on Dia to get energy or Benny to get energy, you can just bring Mulani on the field to cause some vaporize reactions. So uh, here's the Nahida one again, but this time Mulani is going to have Widzith on her, right? She's not going to have uh, Sacrificial Jade, she is going to have Widzith. So her HP is going to be a little bit lower, but her crit damage is going to be a little bit higher. I didn't notice too big of a difference though, um, but that was probably just because of taking the field and getting a, a bad roll, right? Because of how Widzith's passive works, I don't think that I was getting one of the good options. If you get EM or if you get the damage bonus, it's gonna be really, really good. If you get the attack, it is not. And I think that's what I that's what I meant earlier by it was unreliable, right? It's not as consistent. I mean I was still able to hit 300k with it, but it was very much dependent on when taking the field. If I lost the one in three, which you guys would know I would be the one to lose that consistently, then it's no, that is just a stack stick to Mulani, and I find it to be less consistent than something like sac like Sacrificial Jade. So this video has mainly been about Mulani causing the vaporizes, and now we're going to talk about some different options for Emily and Dia, because Mulani, this team is about allowing Mulani to cause vaporizes off of burning enemies. Now, for a replacement for Dia, you do have somebody like Xiangling. Xiangling is going to apply a ton of off-field pyro, allowing um, Mulani to get vapes that way. You're not going to have the damage mitigation, you're not going to have the resistance interruption, interruption to resi resistance interruption, I said it correct, um, but that's going to have a lot of pyro. You do have Toma. Toma was in her trial. This is going to give you a shield, so you may not have to run a healer. But then her normal his normal attacks with Toma's shield up are going to pulse out dealing Pyro. So this is another really good option to keep Pyro onto the enemies. Some other options for Emily. We did talk about Nahida earlier, and we showed Nahida. You can use Nahida instead of Emily. Yao Yao, maybe. That will give you a little bit of healing. However, Yugui is going to be kind of inconsistent. She's not going to be able to apply Dendro to multiple enemies and keep it on them. I would probably say like my top three would be like Kale, Dendro Traveler, and then C4 or higher Kirara. Kale can share some EM a little bit through constellations with her burst. And plus, if you have multiple constellations, you can get the boomerang to spin around Kale. So then you can travel around with like Toma's uh, burst and Kale's skill. Mulani can go around keeping the enemies burning while she is in fact moving around as well so it can be a really really good option then of course you have dendro traveler which his burst their burst is just going to apply a lot of dendro in a very large field so that can be another good option then of course you've got c4 plus kirara i say c4 plus because any character protected by her shield at c4 whenever they do a normal charge or plunging attack is going to do according to dendro attack so if you have enough off-field pyro, like from Zhang Wing, then any time that uh, Mulani is doing a normal attack, which we do a lot through her skill, then it is going to hit the enemy again for Dendro, reapplying Dendro, allowing for the burning to keep going, giving you a shield as well. So you can do a lot of different things with like C4 Kirar to keep the enemy burning, because outside of her cat box of doom mode, her shield does not apply Dendro until you get C4. I wanted to give a couple different options, one in case you didn't like Toma and you wanted to use Kirara, or maybe you don't like Kirara, you wanted to use Toma, well then you have Kale. I wanted to give some different options to cause burning onto enemies, so that way Mulani can get vaporizes. Now that is going to be it for this video. If you have any questions, do be sure to leave it down in the comments, myself, or someone else to answer it, and I'll see you in the next one.